Diana assassinated? The Queen, dead, selling access to a prince? Buckingham Palace has had to quash its fair share of rumours, but some stories fooled almost everyone for a while. Keep watching for hoaxes that left royal watchers scratching their heads. In March 2020, the world found out that Prince Harry was duped by prank callers not once, but twice. Harry ended up engaging in a phone call with two people masquerading as environmental activist Greta Thunberg and her father, but who, in reality, were professional Russian hoaxers Vladimir Kuznetsov and Alexei Stolyarov. As The Guardian reported, the pair were able to communicate by phone with Harry while he was in Canada with his wife Meghan Markle and their son Archie. Harry didn't reveal anything too dramatic in the phone calls, apart from a disdain for former American President Donald Trump and for the tabloid papers that continue to hound him and Meghan, but royal courtiers and watchers alike sounded alarm bells about the fact that the hoaxers were able to make contact in the first place. As the Queen's former press secretary, Dickie Arbiter, told The Guardian, the successful calls indicated a concerning lack of security surrounding the Sussexes. He said, as long as Harry and Meghan are over there, they're out of the protection of the system. For all its faults, the system does and is there to protect. Kate Middleton was hospitalized in December 2012 when a pair of DJs at an Australian radio station placed a phone call to the King Edward VII Hospital, claiming to be Queen Elizabeth and Prince Charles. The pair were able to fool the staff at the hospital, who divulged personal information about Kate's condition. The hospital later confirmed they'd been duped, with its chief executive, John Lofthouse, commenting, This was a foolish prank call that we all deplore. We take patient confidentiality extremely seriously, and we are now reviewing our telephone protocols. While the call might have seemed funny at the time, it had dire consequences. It is with deep sadness that I can confirm the tragic death of a member of our nursing staff. Jacintha Saldana, the nurse who connected the callers with the ward Kate was staying in, was found hanged days later. She left behind a note that read, I hold the Radio Australians Mel Grigg and Michael Christian responsible for this act. Please make them pay my mortgage. I am sorry, Jacintha. Prince William later wrote a letter to Saldana's husband, who shared parts of it with The Guardian. William wrote, Jacintha and her colleagues looked after us extremely well, and I am just so sorry that someone who cared for others so much found themselves in such a desperate situation. In June 2017, the world of royal watchers drew a collective breath when a story alleging that a retired MI5 agent had confessed to killing Princess Diana was dropped. As Marie Claire shared, the tale went like this. At the age of 80, a man had been told he had only weeks to live. Feeling a sudden sense of unease, he decided to confess to a major crime. In fact, he supposedly confessed to a total of 23 assassinations, with the death of Princess Diana being the only time he pursued a woman. This was also supposedly the only job that had come directly from the royal family. The story was eventually discredited when websites such as Snopes pointed out that the original source, a website called Your Newswire, was known for spreading conspiracy theories, misinformation, and full-scale lies. While February 2022 saw a fresh round of hoaxes pertaining to whether or not Queen Elizabeth was still alive, it was hardly the first time that the monarch had had to contend with rumors of her own mortality. In 2016, Twitter was hit with a wave of media blackout hashtags, which began, as the BBC reported, because some people believed Queen Elizabeth had died. At the time, Queen Elizabeth had missed events around Christmas 2016 because she was sick. A few days later, a Twitter user posted a tweet asking if there really was a media blackout, as his wife had seen a rumor about it on Facebook. From there, a fake account, designed to be very similar to the BBC's, began using the hashtag to tweet that the Queen had passed away. Eventually, the rumor was quashed as people realized the account was fake. In February 2022, Buckingham Palace announced that the Queen had contracted COVID-19. Within days, a website called Hollywood Unlocked announced the Queen's death and founder Jason Lee doubled down on the claim on Twitter. Pop culture, among other outlets, later verified that the Queen is still very much alive. Far from alarm bells clanging, there really is no real concern about the Queen's health. In 1996, television broadcaster Victor Lewis Smith picked up the phone and somehow managed to get all the way to Princess Diana. Once connected to Diana, Lewis Smith managed to convince her that she was speaking to none other than internationally acclaimed physicist Stephen Hawking. The Daily Mail reported that at the beginning of the call, the two go back and forth about Diana's ex-husband, Prince Charles, and former American President Bill Clinton. 
Then Lewis Smith went in for the kill. He asked Diana how rugby captain Will Carling was doing. At the time, Diana was rumoured to be in a relationship with Carling, but she didn't bite. The whole phone call took place after Lewis Smith called up Buckingham Palace and claimed to be the public relations person for Hawking. Diana's private secretary, Patrick Jefferson, intercepted the call and connected her to Lewis Smith days later. One thing led to another, and this particular phone call will certainly live long in infamy. In 1995, Queen Elizabeth was victim to her own phone call hoax when a Canadian radio DJ by the name of Pierre Brassard got through to the monarch and enjoyed a 17-minute phone call in which he pretended to be Prime Minister Jean Chrétien. The fallout from the call was swift, and there was an entire change-up at Buckingham Palace going forward. The Mirror notes that calls from then on have been staggered, first passing through the private secretary. From there, the Queen will call back on her own line, ensuring that no one is recording. In 2019, Prince Charles was pulled into a massive art scandal. It was discovered that multiple pieces of art in the Prince's Dumfries House Estate home in Scotland had been created by an impressive forger, not the famous artists to whom the pieces were attributed. The alleged counterfeiter, Tony Tetro, who said he was hired by art collector James Stunt, admitted to the Mail on Sunday that he created paintings that were said to be from Monet, Picasso, and Dali, and that the paintings, reportedly worth $134 million, were hanging in the home. Tony Tetro is one of the world-famous forgers. The Prince's Foundation later issued a statement about the incident, admitting, it is extremely regrettable that the authenticity of these particular few paintings, which are no longer on display, now appears to be in doubt. Stunt later insisted to the Daily Mail that the paintings were authentic. In 2001, the Countess of Wessex was embroiled in a notoriously embarrassing scandal when she was tricked by journalist Maza Mahmood into making very incriminating and embarrassing comments about both Prince Charles and former Prime Minister Tony Blair. Sophie, Countess of Wessex, was reportedly under the impression she was going to meet at the Dorchester Hotel with a prince from Saudi Arabia who was looking for a public relations expert. Instead, she was fooled into making comments that would come back to haunt her. Sophie ended up owing huge apologies to both Charles and Blair and wrote each of them letters asking for their forgiveness. Her comments about Blair included a dig at his wife, with Sophie saying he's ignorant of the countryside. His wife is even worse. She hates the countryside. She hates it. She also commented on the relationship between Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles, who were then dating. She said, on the one hand, there's no reason why she shouldn't be accepted because he's divorced and she's divorced. But then again, you've got issues of the monarch being the head of the church. In 2010, journalist Maza Mahmood hit the royal family again. This time around, he was speaking to Sarah Ferguson, the ex-wife of Prince Andrew, and nearly managed to get insider information about Andrew if he'd been willing to pay the hefty £500,000 price tag. As explained by The Guardian, Sarah was caught on video telling Mahmood, who she believed was a foreign businessman, that she could get access to Andrew for him. After that, she's filmed explaining that if Mahmood will pay the amount, everything will go the way he wants it to. Sarah says, That opens up everything you would ever wish for. I can open any door you want, and I will for you. Look after me and he'll look after you. You'll get it back tenfold. Sarah had to tearfully own up to the meeting once it came out, and Andrew denied having any knowledge of the meeting whatsoever. In her statement, Sarah admitted her financial situation was difficult, but that, quote, is no excuse for a serious lapse in judgment, and I am very sorry that this has happened. Well, there aren't many, really very many words to describe an act of such gross stupidity. It's probably not too surprising that the early days of social media were pretty unusual, and even the royal family didn't entirely escape being wrapped up in Facebook's infant stage. Back in 2007, the Daily Mail revealed that Prince William had been the victim of a fake profile scam on the social media platform. The account, which was created with the name William Wales, the same name that William used while he was a student at Eton, most of the connections on the platform also seemed to be real people who have real-life connections to the future king himself. The Daily Mail notes that one of those friends was named Catherine Middleton, spelled with a K, but William's wife spells her first name with a C, not a K. At the time, Buckingham Palace opted out of directly addressing the possibility that William could be on social media at all, noting, we would consider it a private thing and not comment on it. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more list videos about your favorite royals are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.